Okay, folks, looking at 8.4, solving problems using trig. So the types of questions we're going to look at in this section involve any type of trigonometry. So we're going to review all the possible trig combinations you could have. Looking at the beginning, you're given triangle ABC and you're asked to solve. First of all, the, you can use Sokotoa. In fact, you're supposed to use Sokotoa when you have right triangles. And only when you have right triangles can you use Sokotoa. What does Sokotoa stand for? Well, so stands for sine of an angle theta, any angle, whether it be A, B, or C, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Ka stands for cosine of an angle, whether it be A, B, or C, equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Finally, tangent of an angle theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. What that means is that you are given, you are given a right triangle and you're to solve for one of the sides done. We've already covered this in the previous unit and now what we're looking at being, is being able to solve it when we're giving anything that involves right triangles. Sometimes students seem to think that sine law or cosine law can also be used for right triangles. The problem with that is A, it's not efficient, and B, it tells me that the student doesn't understand what the problem is asking. Sine law and cosine law can only be primarily used for non-right triangles because sometimes what happens is things this, by using 90 degrees in either cosine law or sine law, sometimes you'll have values where you'll have a zero happen and you're not understanding why zero happens. So it could affect your answer. So I recommend folks that you only use Sokotoa for right triangles. Do not use cosine law or sine law. Now cosine law is used for non-right triangles. Cosine law is you have to, to use cosine law, you must be given the following. Either three sides, so all three sides are known, or two sides and a contained angle. If you're given two sides and a contained angle, or three sides altogether, you can use, that's right, cosine law. And here's a version of the cosine law for sides, and another version of the cosine law for angles. So, ultimately, you have to know what you're looking for and use the correct formula. Remember, cosine law can only be used when you're given three sides or two sides and a contained angle. Last but not least, sine law. Basically, we use sine law for non-right triangles, and anytime you can't use cosine law, you must use sine law. What conditions? make you use sine law? Well, that is if you're given the following. Any side plus two angles, or you're given two sides with an angle across from one of those sides. So two sides with an angle across from one of those sides. That means it can't be contained. If it's contained, it's cosine law. If it's not contained, it's sine law. And here's the sine law. Sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. All right. Now, let's look at examples where we have to decide what we're going to use to solve the problems. Here's the first example. I'm just going to show it to you. Rachel's cell phone detects two transmission towers, one 7 kilometers away and the other 13 kilometers away. From her position, the two antennas appear to be separated by an angle of 80 degrees. How far apart are the two antennas? That's the question. How far apart are the two antennas? Well, first thing you have to do is draw it. So there's Rachel and the two antennas. One is 7 kilometers away from Rachel. And the other one is 13 kilometers away from Rachel. We know that the angle between the two towers is 80 degrees. Let's solve how far apart A and B are. That's little r we need. So 
using little r, we're going to use cosine law. Cosine law because we have two sides and a contained angle. So we need cosine law. Okay, one more time. We need little r, so we have two sides and a contained angle. That means that we have to use cosine law. And we're going to solve for little r. So instead of writing r squared equals, we automatically write r equals the square root because we know we have to square root it. 7 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 7 times 13 cosine 80. We plug it in and we get 13.6527. Because we started with words, folks, we have to end with it. So therefore, the two an antennas are 13.6527 kilometers apart. Now, we do not put, note, we do not put round the, this answer till the very end, but if we round it, we have to make sure that we round it according to the way the question asks. All right, next. Let's move on to the next part. Example number two, you're asked the following questions. A wire 134 meters long is connected from the top of a cliff to the edge of a river on the canyon floor. Justin notes the angle of depression to the edge of the river in the canyon to be 35 degrees. Calculate the horizontal distance from the base of the cliff to the river's edge x, round to the nearest meter. So here we have the diagram. A cliff here, a wire attached from the top of a cliff to the base of a river, and this is the canyon floor down here, which is x that we need to find. So let's fill in the information. Well, the, well we need to now understand what an angle of depression is. So whenever you look out, so imagine when you look out, you look horizontally out in front of you. So imagine this is you looking out horizontally in front of you. Looking horizontally out, or Justin looking horizontally out, he looks out and he needs to look down to see the bottom of the wire. That look down is called an angle of depression. So Justin is actually looking down at 35 degrees. Now, imagine Justin's little sister is at the bottom of this cliff. Justin's sister is looking up at Justin over here. So whatever Justin looks down, Justin's little sister looks up. Justin's little sister is 35 degrees, is looking 35 degrees up from a horizontal. That's right. If you notice, this is a horizontal. This is a horizontal. So we have Z pattern going on here, folks. So this will be the angle of elevation is equal to the angle of depression of Justin and his sister. Now note, one of these 35s is actually in the triangle that we need. Yes, the cliff makes a 90 degree angle with the canyon floor. We're not going to assume anything otherwise. And now, look, we have a right triangle. That's right, folks, because we have a right triangle, we can solve for x, knowing the fact that the wire is 134 meters long. So. Recap again, inside a right triangle, here's our right angle. Right angle points to the hypotenuse, there's the hypotenuse. So the wire is going to be our hypotenuse, and x is going to be what side? Well, remember, the marked angle touches both the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So if I know that this side is the hypotenuse, that means that this side is the adjacent, so x is our adjacent side, 134 is our hypotenuse, cosine of 35, why are we using cosine? Well, adjacent and hypotenuse puts the cap part of Sokotoa. So we use cosine of 35 is equal to x over 134. That means that x is equal to 134 times cos 35. That means x is equal to 109.7664. Therefore, the horizontal distance of the canyon floor is 110 meters because we round it to the nearest meter. All right, folks, 
Hopefully that makes sense to you. Got one more to look at. The next one is two tracking stations 20 kilometers apart. Measure the angles of elevation of a rocket that was launched. From station A, the angle of elevation is 41 degrees. From station B, the angle of elevation is 75 degrees. What is the altitude of the rocket? So, what we need to do is draw this. So, two tracking stations, 20 kilometers apart, and a rocket somewhere up above. That rocket's angle of elevation from one part of the rocket is 41 degrees. The angle of elevation from the other station is 75 degrees. So the height represents the altitude of so we need the height and the altitude of the rocket. So that creates a right angle to the base of this triangle. How are we going to solve for this? Well, look at the big red triangle. We have two angles and a side. What can we use? That's right, cosine law. I'm sorry, not cosine law, sine law. We have two angles and one side means that we use sine law to solve. Sine law means, that's right, we're going to look at it, angle R, we need angle R first to be able to use sine law, and using SATT, we find out that angle R is equal to 64 degrees. So fill it in, and we have 64 degrees right there. How does that help us? Well, now because we have an angle and its opposite side, we're going to use sine law to solve for one of these two sides. We decide we're going to solve for A, but we don't necessarily need to solve for A. We could actually solve for B and still find the height, but we do need one of those sides. So using sine law, we're going to solve for side little a, and we cross multiply and solve, and we get this, and that will give us a value for A to be 14.5987. So that's what our A is. So we cross out the A and we put 14.5987. And now what do we have? Well, we have a right triangle. Do you see the little right triangle in here? This is going to be a right triangle. There's a 90 degree angle over here and a 75 degree angle in this corner. Because we have a right triangle, we're going to use a part of Sokotoa and we need to find what part we're going to use. Well, Remember that the right angle points to the hypotenuse, so that's going to be our hypotenuse, folks. Okay, and we need H. What side is H with respect to the marked angle? This is the marked angle, and that would be, that's right, the opposite side. Okay, it's because we have the opposite and the, uh, sorry, we need the opposite and we have the hypotenuse, we're going to use so. So stands for the sine of 75, which is the angle that the marked angle is 75 degrees. Remember from earlier, sine of 75 is equal to H, which is the opposite side, over 14.5987. And we solve for H. How do we do that? That's right, we're going to multiply. Because the unknown is on top, we're going to multiply these values. And we get that H is equal to 14.5987 times sine 75. That means that H is equal to 14.1013. So the rocket's altitude is actually 14.1013 kilometers. So that, folks, is the height of that rocket. This type of question is a thinking question because you can't get to the answer directly. All right, folks, that's the end of the lesson. Have a numerical day. Take care.